Medicine White Coat Ceremony for the winter semester of 2023. I'm Hazim, I'm an MD3 student here at Avalon. And I'm Zyra, an MD2 student here at Avalon. We're very honored to be your host for this evening, and we appreciate each and every one of you in attendance tonight. We, once again, we appreciate your special part in this evening for the MD1 students incoming. So, the warmth of the Avalon community and the amiability of the faculty made our medical school experience very, very memorable. One thing that I can assure you of is that you can always rely on the professors and the administrative staff here at Avalon. Please know that you have everyone's full support at the school. So, the presentation of this white coat to our medical students at the onset of their training is symbolic at the starting of their journey from medical, stu from medical student to physician. As students, when we wear our white coat, we're making a promise to our patients to be what they need us to be, to help them through crisis of birth, dearth, and even everything in between. With the recitation of the Hippocratic Oath, we make a promise to apply our scientific knowledge of human biology and disease in a way that provides our patients with the most effective means to live healthy and fulfilled lives. Once again, congratulations to each and every, welcome, uh, each and every one of you, and welcome to Avalon University. So. Before you embark on this journey, we want to share some words of advice for starters. Make sure you pre-read for every class because that makes it easier for you and the faculty to provide the necessary guidance. So stay hydrated and make sure you sleep eight hours every night and remember to try your very best. Now we can go on and on about the do's and don'ts of medical school, but I think we should allow the professionals to come on up and share their thoughts about the beginning of your journey. So first on up, we would like to have Avalon's very own Chancellor, Dr. Shokas Fate, join us on the stage. Dr. Shokas Fate graduated from Baroda University, the Government Medical College, and is a dermapathology specialist in Youngstown, Ohio. He currently practices at a surgical hospital in the Southwoods. It is a privilege to have our own Chancellor right here present for today's White Coat Ceremony. Please welcome him to the stage. Thank you, Hazim. Thank you, Zaira. Well, that was a pretty good introduction. I requested Dr. Arja to, for me to go first, and I think it was a mistake, <laughs> but I'm here. Uh, I think the idea was that I would set the table for everybody who is gonna follow me and request that they talk about inspirational things in their lives, whoever it is, whoever is the speaker. Uh, and uh, talk about what inspired them, who was their heroes, and, uh, w and how they reached the stage they reached. That should inspire you more than anything else we're gonna say. So, you know, we, we were at a meeting with uh, the Minister of Education, and he impressed me, and Dr. Arja was with, with me. Uh, of his humble beginning, and then we started talking, and I told him that uh, there were four siblings. I had, uh, I was the youngest one, so I had to fight for bread. Uh, in a 10 by 15 room, uh, which included everything, a kitchen and, you know, um, broken walls, there, there, there were no concrete walls. But we survived, and I think the, the, the brunt of that kind of uh, struggle uh, was felt by my mother, because my father all of a sudden de decided that he wants to become a veterinary doctor. My mother said, go, do it. So he went to uh, a big city, uh, and she was left in the village with four kids. A salary of uh, 30 rupees at that time was, I think, about $4 a month. So she lived with her parents and four of us. The parents supported. And uh, that really inspired me. Uh, and obviously, later on, uh, my father joined, and uh, he worked hard to, to educate us. Uh, so a lot of credit goes to him for education. So I think, uh, I think uh, uh, something like that should inspire so that you know 
that if you have uh, cold water and there's no running water, or there, if there is uh, too much cold in the classroom, or the food is not of your liking, it's for two years, put it up. It's a small bump in the road, but uh, the, you already have a goal in your hand. You, you have a golden opportunity to really do so well with whatever you want to achieve. You know, you're gonna be a doctor. I presume you're gonna be a doctor. I hope you're gonna be a doctor, because you, if you don't do well, then halfway through, you'll be gone. I guarantee you that. And uh, there is no slack in education. Uh, these uh, professors, they look benign, but they are pretty malignant. They will, they will not allow any slack in your education. And that's the way it should be, because that's what will bring uh, the strict discipline, and that's what will cause you to be a good doctor. And always try to separate your personal things with your duties. Uh, I don't know how to explain, but you know, there are always, you wake up in the morning and you don't feel like talking. Like today I told Amin, that I, do, I just don't feel like giving a speech. I don't want to give a reason, but I don't feel like doing it. But that's my job, that's my duty as a, as a, as a, uh, uh, as a chancellor. I committed myself to do this. And you will wake up in the morning, and uh, you have been probably awake all night uh, taking care of the calls with the patients and don't feel like going to your office or the hospital. But you put those things aside. You may have personal issues, family issues. When you see a patient, nothing should interfere. You should be able to talk uh, and take care of the patient. Now that's the, the the serious part, I don't want to be dark, but that's the message I wanted to give today. Uh, as far as the life here is concerned, you'll be busy. Dr. Aja gave you the schedule. You know, you may have four or five hours a week on a Saturday or Sunday to, to relax. But when you have those four or five hours, try to assimilate with the local people. Y you'll be shocked how quickly you grow up in two years. Uh, yeah, by mixing with the people, staying away from the family, and uh, taking care of the studies and a uh, lot of uh, things yourself, you know, food and whatever. But do it. Go mix with the local people. They're, they're beautiful people. The island is beautiful. And you will enjoy and learn a lot of things. So welcome to Avalon and uh, enjoy your stay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Fateh, for that inspiring speech. Our next speaker for the evening is Dr. Serving Kelly. Dr. Kelly currently serves as the Inspector General of Health in Curacao and currently teaches epidemiology and biostatistics at Avalon. Dr. Kelly completed his medical studies in the Netherlands, and after working shortly as a family physician, he began teaching. So, Dr. Kelly has taught since 2007 in different institutions and has published several articles or on cardiovascular, nutritional, and infectious disease epidemiology. So please welcome Avalon's only, Dr. Kelly. Yes, um, good evening, um, uh, Chancellor, uh, Deans. Faculty, students, uh, welcome to Avalon. This is the first day of the rest of your life. Yes, that sound very, sounds very uh, cliche, but actually you, you changed uh, your life. Um, if I continue on the track that is set by um, Dr. Fateh about inspirations, uh, what inspired me to do medicine? Uh, actually, um, I wanted to, to do to study music, my father told me, listen, um, you're not going to make a living of it in Curacao. So uh, think twice. So I said, okay, I will keep doing music as until today. Um, but I was always involved in church. So I said, okay, I want to be a priest. So, okay, everything was done and I was set to be a priest. And there were about two years that I thought, hey, if I'm going to be a priest in the Catholic church, I cannot get married, I cannot form a family. So 
I got off that track, but of course I still stayed in church. And the next thing I said, okay, if I want to help humanity and with something that I like, then it's medicine. So I rolled automatically into uh, medicine. That's how I came into medicine, actually. And it was a combination of two things, because I was very good at physics, mathematics, uh, and, uh, um, and, and chemistry. And on the other hand, um, I had to choose biology to get in, and I enjoyed it a lot. So that was a kind of uh, great combination. And I remember, and everything was arranged, and I think one week before I had to leave to Holland to study medicine, there was a big car accident on uh, just around the corner where we lived. And then I was there shaking on my legs because it was very close. Then I said, oh, I chose the wrong study, I think. But uh, nonetheless, I kept going. And, um, and that, that, that's something that uh, the moment I did um, choose that direction, one of the things that inspired me always that was the St. Elizabeth Hospital, because if you would draw, um, drive home from the library, I had to pass uh, along the, the old St. Elizabeth Hospital near the uh, Pater, Ense, Pater Ewensweg. So I had to see it. That's where I'm going to be one day. That's where I'm going to be one day. So I had it printed in me. And uh, when I came to Holland, it was wow. It was great. Uh, and it was, I was very motivated. And then I remember the first um, class huge class, I think we were about 300, uh, 350 students. And then I think it was one of the, the first classes, uh, one of the professors said, um, and that was a kind of uh, uh, shock in all your inspiration that you had because he said, and, and I think I've told this before, he said, look to your left and you look to your right. Of the three of you, within three years, one will be left. The other ones will have dropped off or failed to study. So everybody was, uh, it's not me, it's not me. So that's where we started. But it was something that, okay, if that might happen, it mustn't be me. And, um, and then I realized, I, I, I had gone very easily through uh, the, um, the, the high school, the secondary school here. I was the second best of the island. So it was quite easy to go through that. But when I started studying medicine, Everything changed because you didn't have 20 or 30 pages or like the final exam that you had 100 pages. You had exams from 300, 400 pages. At those times, we did not have blueprints. Uh, we didn't have the amount of questions. Yeah, the amount of questions we had, but they were between uh, um, 100 and 300 questions uh, that you would have. And you would have exams that would last between uh, one to two and a half hours. So these are the type of exams we had at that time. Um, but every time what kept me going was, OK, I want to become a physician. And every time I was wondering how things that I saw in reality actually had their basis in some discipline. And that kept me going. I learned a lot. Uh, and the biggest change, I think, in my personality and my formation was during my study, knowing what was going on. Uh, knowing about disease, about uh, psychology, learning about how your opinions are in life, how you should deal with them, that's changed a lot. So that, that, and that inspired me to keep on going, to keep on going with the idea, OK, I'm doing something that's very useful for uh, humanity. And that's what kept me going uh, all the time. It was not easy, because you would have exams on the 23rd of December, followed by the next exam, maybe the 4th of January. So you would pass Christmas and you're studying. But uh, what keeps you going is the motivation of what you want to become. And by the amount of the material, but by the interest that you have in, in diving into material, nearly everything else ceases to exist. And uh, because the problem with distractions is um, they can hurt your study a lot if you have too much uh, distraction. So the concentration and focus that was done. And it was easy because you were forced into a system uh, that, uh, that would work by itself. We didn't have, um, we, di we did have free attendance uh, policy, but of course that had a reason because you had another reason to uh, be present because a lot of things told in class could not be found in the book and not, and at that time we didn't have real slides, uh, and nor in the, in the short 
hand notes that were given. And the books were a lot, so you needed that as an assistant. But also, when you were there, you were having a lot of examples and a lot of time, a lot of uh, patient examples. So that keeps you, these are the things that uh, keep you going, keep you going, and keep you going. So, and the inspiration um, uh, there. A uh, couple of things I learned the hard way. You have to start early. If you are studying, you have to start early. If you do not start early, you might end up panicking. And once I had an exam, I just got a blackout because I wanted to study everything I went through, but I started too late and the end of the exam, uh, at the exam, I didn't know anything. And two days later, after the exams, three days later, then I started to remember things again. And I knew exactly what I wrong, had wrong and why. So the thing is, um, you have to start early. You have to keep focused. You came here to become a physician. So, and that's what you have to keep in mind. Because when the days are difficult, this is what will keep you focused. And when you are in front of exams, and you see only exams and a lot of materials, um, this is what will keep you going. Uh, this is what will keep you uh, interested. So your focus will actually determine a lot of things. And focus without a priority is not sufficient. So you need to put your priorities, and your priorities should be uh, to become a physician in a healthy lifestyle. Okay, uh, the professor already uh, mingle a little bit, know the local people, uh, have a little bit of uh, um, recreation, uh, but eat sufficient, sleep sufficient, eat healthy, okay? And that will make you uh, a real uh, way going it. Because medicine actually, it might not be too difficult, but it's a lot. And the thing is, it's a lot. You have to know it in detail. And with any patient, you have one chance. You cannot redo a patient. Sometimes, maybe. But nowadays, they will sue you also. So you don't have the opportunity to, to make mistakes and to fail. You, can, um, you have to uh, know your material uh, in detail. And there is only one way to get there. That is to get interested, stay interested, stay focused. And when the days are extremely difficult, you must think this too shall come to pass. So, and that will give you another day, a better day. So uh, the thing is, welcome, uh, keep focused. And you have started not only a change in, uh, in direction of your career, you also started in a second change of your uh, character and personality because you will be a physician for 24 hours. So now you are a medical student for uh, 24 hours. Keep focused, and that is where you should uh, be. Okay, uh, success, and um, the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Kelly. Now I would like to welcome the, our next speaker here on the stage. I would like to welcome Dr. Rishma. Dr. Rishma is the Associate Dean of Admissions at Avalon University School of Medicine. She is an Avalon University School of Medicine graduate and is currently a faculty member at, in the Basic Sciences Department at Avalon University. Before coming to the academic sector, she worked in the casualty department of a multi-specialty hospital in India. Please give her a warm welcome. Thank you, Zaira. Thank you, Hazim, for kind words. Good evening, everybody. As they already mentioned what I have done and what I have achieved, but as Dr. Fateh already told us that we need to inspire you guys and how our inspiration came. So I got a chance to give up just my, give just a little bit um, of my personal story that, uh, you know, coming out from a small and middle class family, I was not, um, you know, growing as big, big dreams or big, you know, going to be college or something. So I always had that, that I want to go become a physician at one point. But unfortunately, after completing intermediate and everything, as you all know, I told that um, coming out from a small family, I couldn't afford it, I couldn't go for it due to some other reasons. So I went in a different career path. But one fine day, I remember 
In 2009, I got a chance, thanks to our Chancellor, Dr. Fateh, to become a physician and fulfill my dream. So I took that opportunity and joined the med school, as you have joined today. Completed my medicine, studied. I have always seen Dr. Arja and Dr. Bala here working so hard, making sure ev every single student goes through a smooth medical journey. As they are your faculties and they are your deans, yes, at that moment, they were my faculties and they are still my mentors till today. So after going over medicine, I was like, okay, this is done. I have completed medicine, so I am set and start working. Then I realized, no, this is not giving that satisfaction as a complete. I need to still work on it and get a little bit more. So I joined Avalon again and started working as a faculty, and I started with teaching some of the pre-med courses and the behavior science. Then one fine day, again, I got another motivation looking at Dr. Arja, Dr. Fateh, Dr. Bala, and all the other faculty members doing more and more progressive work. I was like, yeah, I should also do something and get going. I shouldn't stand somewhere and say that I'm done and I, I have nothing more to go for. So I joined master's in psychology. I completed one master. Currently, I'm pursuing my second master's in psychology. And then, looking at our Dr. Arja, all the time, he is my big motivation, that he always goes on and on. He's not stopping, and he's not allowing us to stop. Thank you, Dr. Arja. Thank you very much for being such a great motivator. So my big motivation and big idol people here, Dr. Fateh, our chancellor, and he is the one whom I always want to look like. I'm always looking like, okay, people should see that yes, yeah, he's Fateh, I can never reach that Fateh level, but definitely I'm looking forward, going on his path, and making sure that he's proud of me. And at the same time, having Dr. Fateh, uh, Dr. Arja and Dr. Bala as mentors, and definitely my all the colleagues who are very supportive, very knowledgeable and very experienced people, I feel keep going and motivating myself to do something. And with that, with my experience, I can share that same experience with you guys. Look at the faculty members you have. Look at them, look at the people around you. Your seniors, your juniors, they all are coming out from different, different backgrounds. Being in admissions, I see that everybody has a different story, different motivation, different areas, and different, different inspiration to become a physician. So at this point, this is your day. I don't want to steal the moment, and I don't want to just take everything, okay, this is about me, but I'm telling you that knowing yourself, you have chosen a goal, and you have chosen a medical career. So stay with that medical career, and I have a lot of, um, you know, experienced personalities sitting around me. I will say, not a big experienced person, still a learner. I can say that from now onwards, since you have joined already, this is one week almost going to complete. I will say start eating, singing, playing, dancing, everything. Medicine, medicine, medicine. And keep going. One fine day, the fruitful results, that doctor's title in front of your name, will make you proud of your own self. Keep going, and good luck. Don't forget to enjoy a little bit, but remember you have a goal to achieve. Thank you very much, and have a great evening. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Reshma. Next on up, we have Dr. Suma Aluri. Dr. Suma completed her master's in pathology at an institute of medical sciences and a research foundation in India. Presently, Dr. Suma is an associate professor of pathology at Avalon and also previously served as a medical officer in the Indian Army. Please give her a warm welcome. Thank you, uh, Zaira and Hazim. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen boys and girls. I'm honored to stand here to represent the Avalon family. And uh, I think I don't need this speech what I prepared now, because Dr. Fateh said, talk about yourself. So thank you, Dr. Fateh, because very few people want to know. Nobody is worried about your struggles, right? So 
the best way to describe me is uh, I am a rich daughter of a very poor father. He always said, I will do anything you want, but I don't have money. So you have to dream, you have to achieve. If it involves money, I'm sorry, I can't do it for you. But he always gave me whatever I imagined, it was there for me. But when he asked me to join medicine at Armenia, I had no idea what kind of country it is. Just like you guys came here, I went to a new country. And uh, when I reached there, he told me when I was leaving, I was just boarding the flight, I was all excited, I'm going to be a doctor. That I was sure. I didn't know about the various subjects I had to read, you know. So when I'm boarding the flight, he said, uh, Beta, that means child in Indian. Uh, Beta, please come with a degree. I was wondering, what, what does he mean? Of course, I'm going to do my master's. I'm going to bring my degree back. So he wanted to say, please focus. Come only with your degree. We don't want anything else from Armenia. So he said, OK. So that's a big challenge already. He challenged me to come back with the degree. He thinks I cannot qualify. Then he gave me an open ticket. He said, when any day you feel scared or you're lonely, please come back home. I, I thought my father really loves me. Wow, he gave me a ticket. I can just come back. So after two months, it was severe winters in Armenia. And all the re re really rich kids went to India for a holiday. So then I kept looking at the ticket. I have a ticket. Why should I stay here? It's so cold. I just went home. My father was like, why are you here? I asked you to use the ticket only if you're lonely. I said, yeah, I was lonely. I'm tired of reading anatomy, physiology. I wanted to break, so I came home. He said, no, this was not for that. This was only for emergency. You went there to study. So I was very annoyed. I thought nobody loves me. My father doesn't love me. I said, no, I'm going back. I'll not come home again. I finished my biochemistry. I finished my pathology. There's no call from home. Nobody's asking me, when are you coming? So I said, no, I better do something. Otherwise, you know, people may forget me that I exist because I'm too lost in books. Yeah, I can see my student laughing. Yeah, so I was reading pathology then. Then I came to know there's a chartered flight to India. I had no money to go home because I was studying on a bank loan. So, the, and then I said, there's a chartered flight. I asked, okay, how much is the ticket? They said, you don't need money to go to India. You can give your passport, we'll take you to India. I said, wow, they're such good people. I gave my passport and reached India. My father is like, how did you come? You had no money to come home. I said, no, they said there is no need. I can just give my passport. I never knew what a passport means. I didn't know that I, I needed to go back and study, you know, finish my fourth year of medicine. So my father said, Luke, please don't keep coming home. You have a target. You have to finish your studies. So he rushed. Whatever he managed, he got my passport out from them. I thought they are good people, but they kept my passport. Unless he paid, they were not giving my passport back. So this is my story of trying to study and also you know, trying to reach back home, which was many kilometers away. But I can say, whatever I am today is because of my father, because he wanted to educate a child. He wanted to make a child a doctor at any cost. When I was here in, in the college studying, I had professors who used to tell me, read every day, don't waste your time. So I used to tell them, why do they keep reminding me? I know I have to study, that's why I'm here. I used to take it as a, um, people are not understanding that I have my intelligence too, just like you all feel. Why are they telling us what we have to do? We know what to do. Sometimes we get lost in our emotions. We get lost in our emotions and we take decisions which are not good for us. Like my decision to rush back home and not concentrate on studies. So I always tell my students, you have to dream about what you want to achieve. You work towards your dream. You try to concentrate on what is your goal. Till you achieve your goal, you have to keep everything else aside. Even though it sounds very simple, it's a very difficult task. Like I had a difficult task this morning when Dr. Arja came to me and said, uh, Dr. Suma, you're going to speak today. I said, oh my god, I have to prepare a speech. I actually wrote and I even typed it down. 
because I thought I have to talk uh, uh, nothing but about myself, only about motivating students. I didn't know that I am the motivator myself. So I want to really thank Dr. Fateh for giving me this opportunity to tell my story. And after completing my medicine, the next motivation came from Dr. Abdul Kalam. I used to always read his writings and I, I used to always uh, listen to his speeches which are now available on YouTube also. So what I wrote for you today is all what he said, I compiled it actually, and I wanted to make you feel whatever I felt I should have done as a student. So allow me to read this because I really worked hard, Dr. Fateh, to write this down. And uh, I, I put in all his sayings together and to make some sense and to come out as a message for all of you. So dreams are important. You have to dream before they come true. Dreams transform into thoughts. Thoughts result in action. A dream is not what you see while you're asleep. A dream is something which does not let you sleep. To achieve your dreams and succeed, you must have a single-minded devotion to your goal. Life throws a lot of distractions at you, both good and bad, which will push you off the track or it can keep you on the track. Everyone wants to hear successful stories, but please read the failure behind successful people. Read about how they failed in an attempt to learn. Read about their stepping stones to success, which were failures. Read about their motivations. Winners are not those who never fail. Winners are those who never quit. Whenever you face difficulties, remember they are part of life. They prepare you, they develop you. So depression in failure should never go to your heart. And success, the ego in the success, should never go to your brain. So my friends, when you study, study to save lives. Do your best, and one day you will be somebody's hero. All these are words of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, which I put in together, and I thought it will help you be a good medical student and also a good physician. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Suma. Our final speaker for this evening is the Dean of Avalon University School of Medicine. Dr. Satish Arja has graduated from Gunter Medical School in 2002 has also co-authored eight textbooks and is a peer reviewer for numerous medical educational journals. As the Dean of Avalon University School of Medicine, he is leading the development of the educational program. Please join us on the stage, Dr. Arja. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, both of you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's difficult to speak now after listening to so many motivational stories. And before going into my motivational story, I'm, but I would like to congratulate Avalon University School of Medicine because we have approval from the local government for Bachelor of Health Sciences. Congratulations to uh, Avalon University School of Medicine. And also, we would like to start this uh, pre-medical education program starting from September 2020, 2023. Thank you, Dr. Fateh. Good evening, everyone, again, once again. Uh, coming to my motivational story, for me, definitely, my inspiration is my mother, my mentors, my teachers, and especially now my students. They are, still today, my students are the main motivators for me. Thank you so much for, to all my students who give me wonderful feedback. And also, how I got into medicine. I would like to share this story with you. Uh, Whenever I got sick, my mother used to take me to a nearby town to, to show to a physician. I used to look at him. He has wonderful life. When I see, whenever I see him, you know, I feel I felt like I should go into medicine. I, I should do medicine and I should serve the patients. Uh, I will be waiting for uh, what you call to get sick 
so that my mom can take don't think just to see him because she used to take me to a movie also whenever we go for a town because of that yeah, i used to wait for it but definitely i had so many financial struggles during my childhood it was very tough because i lost my father when i was 12 and my mother is the only one who uh, helped me with all the way to go into medicine and to complete and till i came out of india she is the one who helped me with the whole thing definitely she is my inspiration and my motivation till today also and also i would like to share one more uh, thing also because i was looking at the calendar the new academic calendar and we were starting uh, on january 9th it's the new orientation day i still remember i joined with avalon university school of medicine on january 7th 2007 I think it is almost 16 years completed with Avalon, and now it is my 17th year with Avalon. <laughs> so dear distinguished guests, Chancellor of Avalon University School of Medicine, Dr. Shokat Fateh, Inspector General of Public Health, Dr. Kaley, students, parents, faculty, staff, and administration. I want to add my warm welcome to the Avalon University School of Medicine White Court Ceremony January 2023. I want to take this opportunity to thank the, everyone here to congratulate the new students who are entering into medical school. To the students taking the white coat and Hippocratic oath, we are proud of you. You have achieved outstanding success by going through the difficult process and working hard. You are entitled to study in one of the medical schools with the strongest educational programs in the Caribbean. You will have another challenge and exciting four years. I know your families will be with you, support and trust you endlessly, as they have always done for you. You will now wear your white course, the starting medical school, being a medical student, taking the first step into medicine, and being a large family member will be symbolically expressed. You will wear your white coat as a symbol of purity, equality, professionalism, and trust. You will carry it with awareness of your professional privilege, but with the assurance that you will always use this privilege for the benefit of your patients and society. By choosing the, to study in medical school, you have not only stepped into an important profession, you have also stepped into a lifestyle that requires hard work under difficult condition, but is, it is highly satisfying. Of course, your educational journey will not be limited to four years and will continue after your graduation. We'll always be with you throughout your entire journey it's our responsibility to ensure that you make the best use of all the university's facilities for education, personal, and professional development. And an excellent medical student takes full advantage of all the opportunities offered by the university. The medical student asks many questions and seeks answers to these questions. In this context, the student who tires the teachers is the best student. We know very well that it is not possible to be good physicians of the future only by acquiring academic knowledge, a profession in which it is essential to value human beings, respect human dignity and rights, and wish well, for, wish well for all humanity and others, undoubtedly requires a development far beyond academic knowledge, not just acquiring academic knowledge. Having ethical and human values, being a good team member, and communicating well are so important and it is impossible to talk about being a good physician and scientist without these values. Likewise, you will follow the rules and guidance of science. To achieve this from the first years of education, you will take compulsory courses on the scientific approach, evidence-based medicine, critical appraisal of evidence, conducting and sharing research through courses such as epidemiology, biostatics, and evidence-based medicine. All students have the opportunity to apply the most fundamental research methods and analyze and present the results. In this sense, we want to take full advantage of the university research opportunities. The main health problems of society and the social dimensions of health and diseases will be at the center of your education and later on your professional life. And of course, future physicians will be working in accordance with the development technology. They will query they will require query and critical evaluate the necessity of new, using new technologies regarding ethical values and scientific validity. The use of appropriate technology is a significant issue for future physicians. Medical faculties aim to train good physicians and scientists. 
wherever you go and work after graduation, we want you to have no difficulties related to your responsibilities. We want you to be fully prepared and competent, whether you work in a primary care or in emergency in a village or a residency training in any specialty that you choose. We attach importance to our students' active participation in our school's decision-making process. There are many committees where students are involved and directly involved in the decision-making process of Avalon University School of Medicine. I want to state that this is much more possible if you take responsibility, work for the development of education and research programs, and carry out various projects. Student representatives are actively involved in all our school committees and contribute to development of our educational program. You will find a student club and that suits you and you like it. Climb your education and take responsibility for improving it. In addition to academic studies, I have learned from my personal experience that it's very important for a good medical student to deal actively with any field of art and literature. I used to read a lot of books in medicine not just the medicine, outside medicine. Many books I have read. At least I could count 1,000 books I read during those six years. Please enjoy, if anybody is interested in art and literature during your study in medical school. And before finishing my speech for today, I would like to tell you three things. You know, you all deserve to be in the medical school. I'm sure you deserve to be in, in this Avalon University School of Medicine. Otherwise, I'm, I'm sure the admissions committee won't select you to be in this medical school. But don't take this as a privilege. Take this as responsibility. Take this as accountability. And don't think that I joined a medical school, I will graduate, I will be entering into what you call my professional practice. It doesn't come that way. Take it as responsibility, work hard with the dedication and discipline. Then you can achieve your dreams as you wish. And the second thing, maybe it might look simple or it might look silly also for some of you, that I would like to say that many times as medical educators and faculty members, we would be sending emails to the students, maybe communication through the emails. And uh, it's very important for you and you have to take the responsibility of responding to those emails. You know, I'm not saying that sometimes we send the emails, you know, to the whole class regarding a syllabus or maybe PowerPoint. I'm not expecting any response for those kind of emails, mass emails. But sometimes we send emails to the students regarding their performance on the assessments, maybe feedback. It's very hard to find a response from a student. It's very disheartening, but uh, that is the reality and that is the truth. And uh, I was discussing with one of the clinicians, you know, in the US, he was practicing and he was discussing with me the same topic. You know, sometimes students don't respond to the emails. And especially these clinicians and physicians are evaluating the students during the clinical rotations, not just based on your medical knowledge or patient care, even your communication skills, either it's verbal or written. You know, I asked the logic to this physician, what is the reason? Why would you like to assess a student responding to communication or something like that? See, look at this student. If he's not responding to my email, now, as a faculty member, do you think that he will respond to a patient who is going to mail him in the future? That, that's the responsibility. That is the accountability that you have for your peers, your colleagues, faculty members, staff, patients, and patient families. Please be communicate with them. And the third thing uh, which I would like to share today is, is just my personal experience and how empathy is important. Empathy is very important for a physician. It's, it's my bad, but this is my personal experience. I must tell you this. And last year, I went for an accreditation site visit for a medical school. I was the team member for the accreditation site visit. Actually, I was the team secretary. And my job as a team secretary is to collect the reports from everyone and complete, compile. Not only the reports from everyone, but I have to write my report also, my part of my report also and then should have a consciousness, and then we should send to the accreditation body. That's how our responsibility. We have a timeline for that. And one of the team member, I think she is close to maybe between 70 and 80 years, but it is not my intention to tell her age, but my intention to say that how she is experienced. And we are approaching the timeline. She sent me an email and saying that I'm sick, I got COVID, I cannot send the report this week, maybe I will send you next week. I responded to her, okay, no problem. You can send me your report in the next week. But then I realized 
how I am robotic while I am responding to this team member. I felt like this is, I felt embarrassed. I felt ashamed what I did. Then immediately within one hour or two hours, I sent out an email saying that I hope you are feeling better. You, you get well soon like that. This is what we want from every physician. You should show empathy to your patients and also to patients' families. It's not, empathy doesn't mean that you acknowledge the patient's feelings, but you have to go through the feelings of the patient. You have to be in the shoes of the patients. That's the meaning. It. Take it as responsibility. You have a responsibility that you're in the medical school. And B, communicate with every member and show some empathy to your, your colleagues. And that's all I would like to say. Dear student, I wish you all a successful and enjoyable academic journey. We will always be with you on this journey. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Arjo. And um, I would like everyone to give our speakers a big round of applause, please. So before we commence the white coat ceremony, we would like to take the time to, in to recognize some special individuals currently enrolled at Avalon. These students have been selected to receive awards of excellence based on merit, class attitudes, and initiative. To present their awards this evening, we would like to call Mr. and Mrs. Fateh to the stage, please. We would also like to welcome Justine and Liba to the stage to help with the award ceremony. So the first two awards will be rewarded for achievement in the following MD1 courses, Molecular Basis of Medicine and Human Structure and Function. We would like to congratulate Glory and Niji. Please welcome us, please join us on the stage. <laughs> The next award will be rewarded for achievement in clinical skills course MD1. Congratulations, Liba Faisal. Our final MD1 award. So this award is going to be rewarded for achievement in the epidemiology and biostatistics course in MD1. Congratulations, Justine. Congratulations to our MD1 award recipients. The next set of awards will be given to achievement in the MD2 courses. The recipient is receiving achievement award for the following courses. Human structure and function, clinical skills, and molecular basis of medicine. Congratulations, Christabel. <laughs>
family so nice. The next award is for Mind, Brain, and Behavior course in MD2. Congratulations, Hinzila Shokat Minhas. Our final MD2 award is going for the evidence-based medicine course. Congratulations, Mahima Kamble. The awards for MD3 are being awarded for the following courses. Mind, Brain, and Behavior 2, Diseases, Immunity, and Therapeutics 1. Congratulations, Sheetha Vasudevan. The next MD3 awards are going to recognize achievements in Evidence-Based Medicine 2 course. Congratulations to Sherry Aziz, Shiza, Vasudevan, and Amrit Kobo, who's unfortunately unable to make it today. And the final MD3 award is for recognizing achievement in the Clinical Skills 3 course. Congratulations, Judy Lee. MD4 awards are for achievements in the following courses, disease and immunity and um, therapeutics to an evidence-based medicine. Congratulations, Aquinta Messick.
And unfortunately, our final award recipient was unable to join us tonight, but for achievement in the Evidence-Based Medicine 3 and Clinical Skills 4 course, we would like to give Rosa DeLeon a round of applause. All right, thank you for joining us on the stage. Congratulations once again to all our award recipients. We would like to commence with the white coat ceremony. This ceremony is important because it allows us to reflect on what it means to don the white coat and to practice as physicians. When you wear your white coat, it's not only a privilege, but also a great responsibility. To present the White Coats this evening, we would like to welcome Dr. Arja, Dr. Kelly, and Dr. Shokatvate to the stage. Please give them a warm welcome. We would also like Dr. Valaramia to join us on stage. Dr. Bala, can you please join us also on the stage? Yes, please. Our first white coat will go for Victor Aku. Next on up, we have Emmanuel Arias. Next on up, we have Michelle Aka. Sorry about that, Michael Acock. Next on up, we have Nadia Babar.
can you please come closer to the stage? Next on up, we have Clifford Choten. Alexia Cuffey. <laughs> Mary Tasco. Nicole Jajowski. Abdallah Humadi. <laughs> Anjum Igbo. Sadala Jujati. Promise Mabala. Bhagavan Nara Simhia. <clears throat> Ijoma Ikoro.
Sakinat Ola Bupu. Kayla Oweila. Rushil Patel. Mark Petersky. Fayat Razak. <laughs> Mega Raya Ravi Kumar. Bronte Saha. <laughs> Elson Sima. Monica Seri. Sanjot Sudi. Devik Shakwa. (laughs) 
Akash Tai. And last but not least, Joy Tikan. Looking good, everyone. For the next segment of this evening, we would like to call all the students up who just received their white coats to recite the Hippocratic Oath. The Hippocratic Oath is the most widely known Greek medical text. It requires a new physician to swear upon a number of hearing gods that will Unhold a number of professional ethical standards. Joining us on the stage is the Dean of Basic Sciences, Dr. Risa uh, Bala. Please give her a warm welcome. Thank you so much. It's good to see you all. So I'm going to read a Hippocratic Oath, and you are going to raise your right hand for me. After every face, you're going to say loudly, I do. OK? OK. I publicly acknowledge and accept the privileges and responsibilities given to me as a physician in training and dedicate myself to provide care to those in need. I will approach all aspects of my education with honesty and integrity, embracing the opportunities to learn from patients, teachers, and colleagues. I will always maintain the highest standards of professional conduct. I, I will certify only that which I have personally verified, and I will neither receive nor give unauthorized assistance on examinations. I, I will respect the humanity, rights, and decisions of all the patients, and will attend to them with compassion and without bias. I will not forget that medicine is an art as well as science and that warm sympathy and understanding are integral to patient care. I accept the responsibility to improve the standard of health in my community, to increase the access to care for the underserved and to advance the medical knowledge. I make these promises solemnly, freely and upon my honor. This is a great privilege, guys, but with this privilege comes the responsibility. I wish you and hope you to become a successful, compassionate, and responsible physicians. I wish you also the pleasant journey at Avalon, and also I want you to stay blessed with less stress. Okay, good luck. I want you to sorry. I want you to stay here for the picture so that we are we are all gonna join you for your picture. Okay.
Congratulations, students. You have now officially begun your medical school journey. Let's give them another round of applause. So that concludes today's event. And once again, we want to emphasize the importance of your white coat ceremony. The white coat reminds physicians of their professional duties as prescribed by Hippocrates to lead their lives and to practice their art in uprightness and in honor. Moreover, it's a symbol of our profession. The donning of the white coat is a century old tradition. It originates in scientific laboratories and was adopted as the at the standard of dress for physicians who incorporate scientific principles in the practice of medicine. And as for us students, it serves as an important reminder and motivator as it remains a reminder that we are one step closer to achieving our dreams of becoming practicing physicians. Your time at Avalon University will be very nice and very memorable. We can assure you that you are in very capable hands, as you can see right here, in the hands of the Avalon faculty. You will come out as better of a physician for your, for your future patients. Our curriculum at Avalon is exciting, and we have no doubt that each and every one of you will thrive in it. You will be very well prepared for the, every challenge along the way. It's going to be a bumpy but enjoyable ride. We're excited to work with each and every one of you as we progress through medical school and we look forward to working with you as colleagues in the near future. Congratulations again and welcome to the Avalon family. Thank you. All right, so I believe dinner should be being served soon. Yeah, all right, so you guys can make your way on outside. Thank you.